uh, Thursday Night Football brings us to the city by the bay, San Francisco and Candlestick Park. And our matchup tonight, NFC West battle between the Seattle Seahawks and the San Francisco 49ers. As you take a look at the standings in one of the most improved and competitive divisions in the National Football League, a three-way knot atop the standings. Whoever wins this one tonight at least will be the leader in the clubhouse for the next three days. Welcome, everybody. Brad Nessler with Mike Mayock. Both teams come in at 4-2, and two, but they come in on very different Sundays. For the Seahawks, a come-from-behind dramatic win over the New England Patriots. And in a game I'm sure the 49ers had sort of circled on their calendar, they got thumped right here by the Giants last weekend. Let's keep this whole thing in perspective. Both teams are 4-2. and two. It's early in the season, and we're in for a street fight tonight. This is going to be a brawl. It's not for the faint of heart, okay? When you look at San Francisco a week ago, I thought they got out of character. Down two touchdowns early third quarter, they completely abandoned the run game. Will not happen tonight. Expect a heavy dose of Frank Gore, Kendall Hunter, and the newly activated Brendan Jacobs. Minimum, Brad, 25 to 30 touches. All right, the Seahawks, a young team, and with a rookie quarterback and Russell Wilson, they're starting to believe, aren't they? You know, how many rookie quarterbacks do you see Take the ball in a two-minute drill against the New England Patriots and Tom Brady and win a football game. You get the sense nothing's too big for this kid. Now, what makes this team go, though, I think, is their tailback, Marshawn Lynch. I think he's the most underrated running back in the entire league. Not only does he make the run game go, he will determine the effectiveness of their play-action game. You see the numbers on Marshawn Lynch. 49ers in the midst of a three-game homestand. Pete Carroll in his third year with the Seahawks. And he thinks it might be a team that could be special before it's all over. Tim Harbaugh, tremendous job a year ago, 13-3, and and they won the NFC West. Can they do it again? Tonight's game's available in HD and Spanish on your SAP channel. Seattle won the toss and deferred. So Ted Ginn will be back deep for the 49ers. You see his numbers, six career returns for scores, three on kickoffs. And in fact, last September, he had a punt return and a kick return against these same Seattle Seahawks. One of each for a touchdown. Moshka to kick. This one will be returnable from six yards deep. And he only got to the 20 and then got leveled. Let's take a look at the 49ers offensively. The front wall that protects Alex Smith and the backs and receivers. Frank Gore, their all-time leading rusher. Miller, Crabtree, Randy Moss, and Vernon Davis, a sensational tight end. So Alex Smith, who had a rough week against the Giants, looking to turn it around tonight. And already we've got an injured player on the kickoff coverage, Malcolm Smith is the guy that's down at the 21-yard line. Yeah, he was involved with the tackle. And looks like he's all right. You see two really good special teams units tonight, two great defenses, and a heavy dose of run and play action. And Brad, this quarterback, Alex Smith, when he's good, on first down, he's 78% completion, which tells you how good that run game is. They'll work from the 21-yard line. As you look at Frank Gore, who will get the carry. And Gore, that's what Frank Gore does. Yep. Out for about seven yards. Defensively for the Seahawks, good front four. The linebacking core, Wagner, the rookie, is the middle linebacker. And the back end, a huge group. Earl Thomas, as you said, is the smurf of the bunch. Everybody else is about 220 pounds. <laughs> By far the biggest group of corners in the league, and it's a street fight out wide. It's a brawl to get off the line of scrimmage. On second down at three, it's Gore for a first down and a bunch more. Out to the 34-yard line. Leroy Hill, the linebacker, made the stop. Got three first-round picks. Watch this right here. Mike Yapati, the left guard, first-round pick. Down block, allows the center to get on the linebacker. Good cut by Gore. He drops the pad level and finishes. And Brad, that's what they got to do to win a football game tonight. Stay true to who their identity is. 
Last week, Gore only had eight carries because they got behind in the football game, and that's not the way the 49ers are built to play. From the 34, play fake, end around. Kyle Williams. Williams got a block, picked up three or four. That, that's great team defense, both Chris Clemens and Leroy Hill. He'll force them back into Clemens, and I think one of the best young defense coordinators in, in the NFL is Gus Bradley. They're really well coached, and they fly to the football. There's Gus. Talking with Earl Thomas last night, he said it's a real brotherhood on that defensive side of the football. Those guys really get along on the field and off the field, and it shows in the way they play. Second and seven. Smith, quick drop. Lays it out, complete Crabtree, hit as soon as he touched it. Brandon Browner made the stop. Now, you know, Brad, the reason I like these corners is they both have a little chip on their shoulder. Browner, 6'4", 220 pounds, and off coverage. He had to go to Canada before he got an opportunity to come back to the NFL and start. Richard Sherman, the other corner, was a wide receiver and D-back at Stanford, fifth-round pick. They're both still upset at the NFL, and they play like it. Third down and three. Play action. Bootleg. Smith's got plenty of time. Fires on the sideline. Complete. Randy Moss has got a first down in Seattle territory. Pick up a 14. I think the thing that Randy Moss can still do is... Watch him off the line of scrimmage with Sherman. Now he's going to try and get vertical, and when Sherman pushes off a little bit and comes back to the football. Remember, Mario Manningham is not up tonight. They put him down because of his shoulder. Randy Moss is going to get more opportunities out wide. Randy Moss with his 12th catch of the year has it at the 45-yard line of Seattle. And he has Straight drop for Smith. Going to go deep. Kyle Williams, the intended receiver, and Richard Sherman was with him stride for stride. That's what I mean by out wide being a little bit of a brawl. Those two corners are going to challenge you all night. There's some pushing and shoving down the field, but I think the ball was overthrown anyway. Sherman, now watch him try and get over top of Williams with that left arm. Ball wasn't catchable anyway, but they're going to push and shove all night long and force the referees to throw a flag. Seventh play of the opening drive for Jim Harbaugh's 49ers. With second down and ten. Only one wide out in this set. So they'll go back to the ground and Gore bulls his way for five. Bring up third down and five. We're getting a little bit of what I, I thought we'd get, Brad. Defensive tackle, Will Tufuaka. To, to give me that one again. Will, <laughs> give it to me. Tuafaku. Tuafaku. Defensive tackle was in at fullback that time. We're getting heavy sets. We're getting heavy downhill running. And that's who San Francisco needs to be. Just alert play action. They're down in six. Eighth play of the drive. Open ball game. Smith steps up in the pocket. It's going to go deep. Had a man by a half step. But he overshot Kyle Williams. Incomplete. Really nice job picking up a tackle defensive end stunt there. He had plenty of time. Just overthrew the football. Okay, Jim. So the punting unit on. High kick, end over end. Have to let it bounce, and 49ers are going to down it inside the five-yard line. Great kick. Nice coverage. Seahawks in a bit of a hole offensively for their first series when we come back to Candlestick in a minute. Russell Wilson, the rookie quarterback at the controls for the Seahawks, but they start in a tough spot, and the crowd in that end zone is going to let them know it from the four-yard line.
play action. Throws out of his own end zone. Out to Michael Robinson, the fullback. And Robinson run out of bounds on the far side. But he's got a first down, and now they've got some breathing room. For the offense of the Seahawks, here's the guys up front. Unger the center, the anchor there. Backs and receivers, Marshawn Lynch, one of the best in the business. Robinson, you just saw him. Rice and Tate, the wide receivers, and Zach Miller, the tight end. Brad, you got to love that play call. Yep. Rookie quarterback, shadow of his own end zone. Daryl Bevel has enough confidence to call play action, and all of a sudden, one play, and they get a first down. That's Marshawn Lynch. Not much there against the 49er defense that is as stingy as Seattle's. And the reason they're stingy, the front seven might be one of the best in the National Football League. Here's the guys up front. Justin Smith, the pro bowler. Linebacking core, Young and Rangy, Willis and Bowman, both pro bowlers. And on the back end, the secondary, Brown, Goldson, Whitner, and Carlos Rogers. Brad, we're six games in. Those two inside linebackers between them have 133 tackles. Amazing. They're both all pro, high-level players. Two tight ends set. One of them on the move is McCoy. Lynch. Trying to follow his blockers out to the 21. It's going to bring up a third down situation. And, Brad, that's what both of these teams want. Look at what the third down situation is. It's third and a manageable three or four. You can run or pass in this situation, and it keeps San Francisco honest. Robert Turbin checks in to the backfield. Marshawn Lynch comes out. Evan Moore is in the game. They're big tight end. He's a six foot five receiving tight end split out wide. Wilson in the shotgun for the first time on third and four. Plenty of time, and he throws a strike to the 30 yard line to Doug Baldwin. Nice protection for Wilson. Plenty of time to make this throw. I like Giacomini, the right tackle, rolling him down. Now, the ball's thrown on the wrong shoulder. From an accuracy perspective, you want that out in front so that the nickel corner, Carlos Rogers, can't make a play. But Brad, he's already completed a couple passes. Right. They got their field position game back, and this is who they are. Three wide outs to the top of your screen on first down up to 29. That's Zach Miller, actually the tight end that was in motion. Play fake. Wilson fires out. Marshawn Lynch out of the backfield. Puts his head and shoulders into oh, the Sean man. Goldson and takes him for a ride. And a couple pushes and shovel. That's what I mean by a brawl. Look at these. It's a division rivalry. They're two of the more physical teams in the league. Brett, did Marshawn have a chance to run that out of bounds or make a move? Yeah. Stuck, his, stuck his helmet in there instead. But, but watch what he does. Shortest distance between two points. Bang. Ooh. And then a little brouhaha afterwards. Yeah, and that, that, that's what we're going to see tonight. That's what tonight's football game is all about, right there. First down at the 42-yard line. Russell Wilson, three for three so far to three different receivers. 49ers take a timeout midway through first quarter. No score in San Francisco. No score here in the first quarter as we check in. Third member of our team, Alex Flanagan. Alex? Hey, Brad. Well, with the San Francisco defense still feeling the effects of Sunday's loss to the Giants, defensive coordinator Vic Fangio felt like he needed to get their minds off of Eli Manning and on to Russell Wilson. So the first thing he did on Monday was he showed his players clips of Russell Wilson, specifically of Russell Wilson scrambling. He said it immediately got his players' attention because they knew what they were up against. Calls this player Michael Vick ish when he's scrambling, Brad. Hasn't had to scramble yet tonight. We'll see if he will here. Empty backfield on first down. Flags are down. Wilson will go down. Justin Smith is there, but I think maybe the 49ers jumped. Looked like some movement on the San Francisco side. Both lines I pointing, thought it was pointing at the Ray other. Ray McDonald. Offside, number 91, defense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. That's who it was, Mike. So that negates the sack. And they walk it up to the 47-yard line. Yeah, when they get in their sub package, 
they kick Ray McDonald and Justin Smith inside, and they bring Alden Smith and Ahmad Brooks outside. And that time, the ageless wonder, Justin Smith, pushed the pocket, got to the quarterback. tackled and a loss of one. Goldson led the charge and now the flags are flying and the officials are going to get in this early and not let the game get out of hand. Walt Anderson is our referee. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 38, defense. 15 yards away from the dead ball spot, first down. Deshaun Goldson, who got run over a couple of minutes ago by Marshawn Lynch. Yeah, he's a little frustrated. I th actually thought there was a hold on that also. And here we are at the very end, Goldston jumping on and talking some stuff, and they're going to call it. So Marshawn not only got the best of that swing pass out in the flats, he got the best of that deal with a penalty. This drive started at the four-yard line. Seventh play of the drive coming up. The Seahawks have it at the 49 or 39 yard line. Lynch at the 34, pick up a five. Carlos Rogers in on the tackle. How about this drive, huh? Minus four yard line start. Yep. Starts with a play action pass with your rookie quarterback, and it's a mixture of run and pass. And, and so far, you can sense San Francisco being a little frustrated. Nothing big to the wide receivers yet except that first down toss to Baldwin on a third down. Here it's second down and five. There's an emotional guy right there. His players love him. Wilson has a look. Wants to go to his tight end, and now he's going to go long and stand on the sideline, and Turin dropped it. Would have been a big gainer, might have been a touchdown. But the rookie out of Utah State doesn't hold it. You know, this was a really good pre-snap read. Look, they're in cover one. That means man-to-man -man all over the board. And here is your running back isolated on the linebacker. Now watch. Out and up. He gets a pick from his tight end, Zach Miller. And this is a perfectly thrown football. Rookie to rookie. The fourth-round pick from Utah State drops what should have been a touchdown. Third down at five. Empty set. Russell Wilson in the gun. Wilson over shoots. Obamanu. When they go to their sub package, Carlos Rogers jumps inside as a nickel. They were playing zone there. Did a nice job jumping the route. Rookie quarterback stared it down a little bit. Steven Hoshka will come in to try to Get the first three on the board. Ted Ginn thought they were going to punt, but they're going to give this guy a 52-yard shot. His career long is 54. Hoshka from 52 yards out. Got it. The Seahawks start at their own four-yard line. Drive stalls. But they get three out of it anyway, and they've got the early lead on the 49ers here at Candlestick. Next Wednesday, catch a football life for an in-depth look at Eddie Bartolo, the visionary owner of the 49ers, who won five Super Bowl championships in his era. Despite controversy, he left behind an legacy. Eddie Bartolo, football life next Wednesday, 8 Eastern, exclusively on NFL Network. Mike Clark, who yeah. made the catch down there in the left corner of the end zone. Tom Rappin, who was pullback on those teams, great Super Bowl teams. Oshkins kick. This one will not be returned. So the 49ers will bring it out to the 20-yard line. 3-0 here at Candlestick. Seahawks in front. Alex Smith and the 49ers have worked from the 20-yard line. First five years he was with this franchise, really struggled. And then Jim Harbaugh came in, and in the last... Year and six games are dramatic improvement. I think both these offenses are quarterback-friendly offenses. I think Jim Harbaugh did a great job of simplifying the offense, making it clear what he expected from Alex Smith, and the play-action game really has been the impetus for their success. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. 
They fake the stretch play. Smith off play action wants to throw, but he can't find anybody open. And now he's just going to get rid of it, throw it away. Good coverage downfield by the Seahawks. Yeah, and I've got no problem with him throwing that football away. And he wanted Randy Moss. There was good coverage. Earl Thomas had him deep. Came back the other way and just threw it away. That's fine. Second down. Go to war on second down. Don't. He threw three interceptions last week, Brad, and the game got out of hand, and that's uncharacteristic for this quarterback. He had only been intercepted once in the previous 11 games before things fell apart last week against the Giants. He's going to be in the shotgun here on second down at 10. Kendall Hunter is in in place of Gore's pass is too high and incomplete for Kyle Williams. And there was double coverage there. Third down at 10. Yeah, he had him. Uh, he had a clear line of sight. It was good coverage by Earl Thomas, but, but he's got to put that one on him. Earl Thomas, to me, is an interesting guy. I mean, coming out of Texas a couple of years ago, it was he and, and uh, Burry from Tennessee was mm -hmm. the first-round pick for Kansas City. They were the two clear first-round safeties. I, I kind of like this kid because I thought he had the best range of any free safety I've seen since Ed Reed coming out of college. Now, he's occasionally inconsistent, but, man, great range, tough kid, and as you alluded to earlier, Brad, much better communications this year than in the past. Another timeout with 5-17 remaining, first quarter. Tonight's aerial coverage presented by Southwest Airlines as you look in on Candlestick Park. The reason for that timeout, Alex Smith, the 49er quarterback, couldn't hear in his helmet. And so, sort of like having a spare tire in your car, they go to the backup helmet. Different helmet, hopefully better communication now for the quarterback. On third down at 10. Smith wants to throw a screen, lobs it out there to Frank Gore with blockers in front. Gore out across the 30, he's got a first down. You know, oddly enough, Mike, the Seahawks, as good as they are defensively, they're one of the worst in the league at third down and long situations, and that's what that was. Yeah, you know, they brought a little X stunt from the left. Look at what happens with Yapati getting outside. There is nobody out there. Gore and Yapati all by themselves. Really nice job by Alex Smith of bringing the defenders into him. And on a third and ten, as you said, Brad, you can't, you got to get off the field. And that's one of the few things Seattle has not done well this year. Frank Gore, good receiver as well as a runner, closing in on 300 career receptions. That one got him a first down. Now they go back to him on the ground. And Gore's into the secondary. Out to midfield. Pickup of 18, just like that. Frank Gore is a downhill guy. Look, look at the block right there by the fullback. They do a great job up front. That was Bruce Miller, converted linebacker from University of Central Florida, making the key block on Allen Branch. Frank Gore is going to get a breather after back-to-back -back plays that have the 49ers out to midfield. Hunter will come in at the tailback spot. In the eye behind Smith. And he'll get the carry. And it's a good one. Six or seven more behind Bruce Miller, his fullback. I really liked his patience in the hole there. A lot of the smaller backs, you know, talking about a 5'8", 199-pound tailback, did a great job being patient behind Miller and making the correct cut at the correct time. Even though he's, as you said, a small guy, he's only lost yardage on one carry of those numbers this year. That's pretty impressive. Second down at four. Vernon Davis now comes out wide from his tight end spot. Miller will flush out of the backfield, and it's a toss sweep to Hunter. And Hunter's got a first down, still on his feet, down to the 35-yard line. And the 49ers have got something working here offensively. Yeah, and, you know, I mentioned earlier, three first-round picks in that offensive line. Anthony Davis is the right tackle. They're going to crack and allow him to get out in front. Toss sweep. Anthony Davis from Rutgers. Crabtree gets just enough of the linebacker, K.J. Wright, to make this play relevant. Right there. K.J. Wright can't fall back in. A good cut block by Davis. Another big play. 49ers have 53 yards on the ground already here in the first quarter. And a first down at the Seahawks. 
35. Quick toss out to Crabtree. Crabtree broke a tackle, still on his feet. Tiptoeing down the sideline. Let's see where they mark him out at the 29 yard line and another first down. And you got to tackle. I mean, you know, I, I kind of pumped them all up as, as being physical and tough on the edge. Richard Sherman is in off coverage. Now, all you got to do is make the tackle there and the play's over. Earl Thomas compounds the missed tackle, drops his head. Really good job athletically by Crabtree staying up and accelerating away. And down inside the 20 at the 19. 49ers didn't even get in the Giants' red zone Sunday. They're in there right now at the 19-yard line. Play action. Smith fires in and out of the hands of Randy Moss, who was looking for a flag and doesn't get it. I thought their fullback was in the line of vision of Randy Moss. Tough catch for him. So he's going to run slant. You can see the hold clearly. That should have been interference. We look at the fullback try to catch. Oh, yeah, the fullback, you're right. right? Tukuafu had his hands on it. Yeah, that's a tough catch, and it should have been a holding call. Defensive penalty. Sherman got away with one. Instead, just second down to 10. Not much this time for Frank Gore. Keep in mind, one of the reasons the fullback's in the way is that he's a defensive tackle. Right. You know, Tuku, Tuku Afu has no idea what he's doing except for knocking down defensive ends. He ends up in the pass route at the wrong place at the wrong time. He just knows he's wearing a 48 jersey now. <laughs> used to be 92. Jim Harbaugh is famous for this, even back in his Stanford days. They used to dress guys up, 300-pounders, wearing number 49, a guy named McGillicuddy. Here it's just defensive tackles and defensive ends in the backfield. Seahawks awfully stingy when their opponents get inside the 20, as you saw. Tenth play of the drive, third down and nine. Smith, pocket starting to collapse. He'll run, and he won't get back to the line of scrimmage. Jason Jones, the defensive end, with a shoestring tackle. And that'll go as a sack, and it'll bring out Akers and the field goal unit. Bobby Wagner, the middle linebacker, did a really nice job running down the middle of the field there. Dissuaded him from throwing the seam route he wanted. Aker's going to try from 38. Ironically, as good as he is, he's missed three inside the 45 yeah. this year. David Akers to try to tie it up. This one's good. So the 49ers, much like the Seahawks, with a long drive and yet had to settle for the field goal. 26 seconds remaining in the quarter. And a 3-3 tie. Mike, just about what we expected it to be, I think, right now. Defensive battle and uh, neither team wanting to give an inch, although we have had some big plays on offense. You know, at, as advertised, basically what we talked about, I think the biggest play so far is the one play Seattle didn't make when Turbin, the tailback, got open down the sidelines. Russell Wilson put it right on his hands, which would have been a touchdown, and the rookie fourth-round pick dropped it. So, to me, the biggest play of the game is one that wasn't made by right. Seattle. And we talked about turnover and battle and yeah. nothing there so far. That's good. Yeah, but they're knocking the tar out of each other. So, <laughs> yeah. so I'm happy, you're happy, <laughs> and guys at home, you ought to be enjoying this one. All right, well, 3-3 three, three tie now. After that drive, took the 49ers 60 yards in 11 plays, and they cap it with the field goal. Russell Wilson warming up on the Seattle sideline. He's been effective in this first quarter so far, mixing it up and getting it to a lot of different receivers. Golden Tate, who has not caught one yet. So Akers, who just hit the field goal, set to kick away. Leon Washington is back deep for the Seahawks, and he's one of the best around as a kick returner. He's got seven career kickoff returns for touchdowns in his career. He won't bring this one out. Well, now he's changing his mind, and finally will take a knee. 
Well, Sundays, you can wake up with first on the field an NFL game day morning. This Sunday on first on the field, what's next for the Ravens without Ray Lewis and Ladarius Webb? Melissa Stark sat down with some of the key Ravens to get that answer. Plus on game day morning, how will the Giants stop RG3 and the Redskins? We'll take you right up to kickoff and all the big games with the most in-depth analysis available anywhere. First on the field and game day morning all start Sunday at 7 a.m. Eastern on NFL Network. Pretty interesting, interesting topics out there this week. I'm anxious to see how Baltimore does without Webb and Ray Lewis against the 5-1 Texans. First down for the Seahawks at the 20-yard line. Lynch, the tailback in the eye behind Michael Robinson. And he'll get the carry, and he'll follow Robinson into that hole, bounce through it, and get out for six or seven yards. Tough run. We'll say that a lot, I'm sure, in this game between Lynch and Frank Gore. Tough run. And that's what this game is all about. You called it exactly right, partner. It, it's just a, a zone-blocking scheme. The right side of the line, McQuiston and Giacomini do a great job there. And I think this tailback is as good as any tailback in the league at understanding how to run that zone scheme. And the talking back and forth goes right up to the end of the first quarter. Tough, hard-fought first quarter. Seahawks 3, 49ers 3. Set to start the second quarter. Brad Nessler, Mike Mayock, Alex Flanagan. Pretty even game so far. There's what the 49ers have done. Almost identical scoring drives. Ten plays, 62 yards, 505 for Hoshka to hit a field goal. The 49ers go 11 plays, 60 yards, 503, and get a 38-yard field goal from Akers. That's what we've had so far. Got Navarro Bowman out wide here on the tailback. Wilson got pressure this time, throws it down the sideline, and a perfect strike again, and Evan wow. Moore dropped that one. You can't, you can't put it in there any better than that. I think this kid is a natural deep ball thrower. Here's the big tight end out wide, six foot six, working on the nickel, Culliver. Now he pushes off a little bit, but you got to catch the football right there. Look it in and catch the football. Two big plays have been dropped by the Seahawks, and Brad, mark my words, those things come back to haunt you. You're not kidding. Brings up third down and three. They had been pretty sure-handed, the Seahawks. Not tonight so far. Wilson, empty backfield on third down. He's going right back to the same pattern, and this one he's got. Obamanu all the way down inside the 40-yard line. Well, that was wide open. Obamano who only had one catch coming into the game. Little rub route. And you see Parrish Cox, number 20, get caught on the rub. Turf Monster gets him, and he falls <laughs> down. But, you know, again, good structure to the play. It's just a rub route, and the two defensive backs have to be on different levels, or one of them is going to get rubbed out. So first down at the 37-yard line. to Marshawn Lynch and Lynch big hole into the secondary taking tacklers with him throws a shoulder in at the 21 yard line pick up a 15. Yeah I love the cutback behind 77 James Carpenter keep in mind there's two first round picks on the left side of this run these two guys both first round picks watch 77 Carpenter there's the block on the linebacker Willis the cutback through the arm tackle of Alden Smith and again this cat is going to finish every run. And when somebody hits him, he doesn't stop because his yards after catch, sensational this year. Almost 300 yards after contact. Oh. He had a lot of contact on that one to get it to the 22-yard line. And now it's Turbin, and he's going to be dropped by Smith for a loss. Justin Smith, who just keeps on chugging, as you said. Long string of consecutive starts for that guy. And it seems impossible in his 12th year out of Missouri. He is so good. He keeps beating Carpenter across his face. Watch him come across his face here. Carpenter's got to win this matchup. And Turbin's got to help him out and cut it back if that happens. But Turbin doesn't have the same feel for the zone scheme. I'm telling you, Justin Smith to me is one of the top 10 defensive players in the NFL, even at age 33. Puts the Seahawks in a second and 13. Wilson fires far side high but caught by Baldwin. And Baldwin's out of bounds near the 16. It'll bring up third down and about five. He's an interesting guy, Brad. Now, 
He's playing against his college coach today. He was a rookie free agent from Stanford a year ago. Undrafted. The kid had 51 catches a year ago. I think he's already the best route runner on this team. He led the team in catches, yards, and touchdowns yep. last year as a rookie. Big play. Third down and five. Sub package in the game. Another timeout. Who got it this time? Swell. This is the third and final. 17. Final, final timeout, timeout taken by the 49ers. Pizza, is that where you really went? I, I tell you what, both sound good right now. Nice job by you. We're going to have to wait about two and a half more hours. Big third down and five coming up for the Seahawks. Yeah, keep in mind, they've already lost two big opportunities with drop balls. They, they've got to convert this third down and convert to seven points. You saw three of their last four trips into the red zone resulted in touchdowns, but the other one, the earlier one in this game, was a field goal. Wilson, empty backfield, three wideouts to the near side. Going to go to the end zone, and in and out of the hands of Braylon Edwards. Incomplete. Boy, I'm going to talk about a great job by Patrick Willis, and there's another fight down on the field. But Patrick Willis, the linebacker, watch him run underneath this route and force the ball to get elevated. Safety, Deshaun Golston comes over top. Braylon Edwards almost comes down with it. But look at the rip on the left arm of Edwards by Patrick Willis. So not only does he run it all the way down the seam, but at the end he rips it out of his left arm. Great job by Patrick Willis. Hoshka, who hit from 52 for our first score of the game, will try this one from 35 yards out. And this one, likewise, as is good. 12.07 remaining first half. Marshawn Lynch having a chat with his friends on the defensive side. He's had a good ball game so far, but they had to settle for three again. 6-3 Seahawks. San Francisco's defense holds. Pass in the end zone broken up. Braylon Edwards, and they had to settle for the field goal. Another 63-yard drive this time at eight plays. And Hoshka's field goal has Seattle back in front by three. Special teams huge tonight. This, this is all about field position, yep. defense, running the football, and play action pass. Dedgin's going to run up to this one at the goal line on the near side. And now reverses his field. Going the wrong way. Not going to find a corner. Run out of bounds on the far side. And See, he tackled him. Dougie Baldwin, the wide out. Good hustle. On the kick coverage. You can get coverage of every NFL game with NFL Mobile from Verizon. Live NFL games Thursday, Sunday, and Monday nights. Every touchdown from every game Sunday afternoon with NFL Red Zone, NFL Network coverage, and more. Call Star Star NFL to download NFL Mobile or go to bzw.com slash NFL to learn more. Russell Wilson over there on the sideline with Daryl Bevel, the offensive coordinator. Ironically, a former Wisconsin quarterback and a former Wisconsin quarterback. There are a lot of those former Wisconsin quarterbacks out there. <laughs> yeah. Not a whole lot of them making a living in the NFL now. <laughs> Just teasing. Scott Tolzien's on the other yes, side. He He's the third quarterback for the Niners. Right. Here's Gore. And he picked up about three. KG Wright, the outside linebacker, made the stop. I just figured I'd get your boy Brad Bielman to text you pretty quickly. Yeah. You want to know what the heck I'm talking right. about. Right. Burmeister know? will be in touch with you, too, I'm sure. <laughs> Second down and seven. Just wonder, pretty soon, Alex Smith doesn't wind up and try to get Randy Moss or somebody deep. Randy Moss is best used in this offense when they're base personnel and they try to get him out wide one-on-one -on -one with a single high safety. That's what they've done the past couple of weeks. Randy Moss on the sideline, so he's not going to be part of this either. The quick throw. Mm. Somebody get a piece of that? No, I don't think. I don't know. Just come out that badly. Red Bryant got some pressure, but but there was a disconnect between Crabtree and, and Smith, the quarterback. They rotated away. So third think, down and seven. Yeah, I thought Alex Smith made the right read coming back weak side. Only four out of ten so far. It hasn't been the kind of start Smith was hoping for. Moss back in there now on third down and long. Moss is by himself, but there's a safety over top. And looked like the left tackle 
May have jumped Staley with a false start. They weren't sure they were going to have Staley tonight. False start, number 74, offense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. He was questionable. You know, and he's up against the rookie first-round pick here, Irvin. Now, Irvin ran 4-4-5 at the combine at 245 pounds. So he's a little nervous about that get-off, and he wants to get out of his stance quickly. Keep in mind, as you, Brad, as you said, concussion last week had to go through the NFL-mandated procedure before he get cleared to play tonight. Now it's third down at 12. Smith, deep drop, in trouble. Throws short across the middle to Gore. He's going to be brought down at the 20. Nice open field tackle by Earl Thomas. Only a six-yard pickup, and the punting team will have to come on. Yeah, third, they're not a third and 12 team. I mean, and, and Earl Thomas is like a missile back there. He's so quick. Leon Washington will drop back inside the 30, awaiting Andy Lee's punt. Lee, three-time Pro Bowler, set to kick. Averaging about 48 per kick so far this year. Washington runs up on this. Tried to field it over his head and dropped it. So no return there. 10-23. Remaining first half. Seahawks with the ball and the lead when we come back. Russell Wilson and the Seahawks set to go to work at the 33-yard line. Started his college career at NC State, was sensational there, then moved on, graduating early, to go to Wisconsin for a year, became a captain there, and led the Badgers to a big season last year. Thought about baseball, got drafted by the Colorado Rockies, but I think he made a better choice now that he's a starting quarterback in the National Football League here as a rookie. Third-round draft choice, and he has been nothing short of sensational so far. Marshawn Lynch behind him here from the 33-yard line. Play action, Wilson in trouble, scrambles out of it. And now he'll run and get down at the 35, and a flag flies in. Terrell Brown's going to be called for a personal foul here. Fans react. They didn't think that was much of a hit on the quarterback, and neither does the coach think that. You know, this, there is this no is... foul for unnecessary roughness. The contact was not to the head. It's second down. Good. That, that, that is a really good call off of that penalty because he slides. The defensive back's not, it's not even close to con helmet to helmet. And at this point, Russell Wilson slides so late, you're going to have some contact by the defender. Jim and, says no way. He was right. They pick it up. Second down at eight. Into the middle goes Lynch. Let's check in with Alex. Hey, Brad. Well, quarterback Russell Wilson is also making, already making quite an impact with his work ethic. He's gotten into a routine of talking to his receivers early on in the week. They get a text message on Monday kind of previewing the team that they're going to play. He talks to his receivers about some of the tendencies that they might see out of the upcoming DBs, the coverages they might see. A Golden Tate telling me before this game that he has never seen this quarterback down, an extraordinarily positive player. Let's see if his receivers can get open on third down at five. Here comes a blitz. Wilson fires, caught. Sidney Rice. Rice inside the 40 all the way to the 35-yard line. Wow. First catch for Rice, and it's good for 27 yards in the first down. I love how they hang in. Watch Alden Smith come all the way around on the loop, and the rookie quarterback trusts his protection. Leon Washington looks him up. He and Unger make the play. The quarterback hangs in there and lets his big play receiver now. There's a lot of pushing and shoving out wide. Sidney Rice wins that one against Terrell Brown. But Ness, just the, the, the presence of mind of a rookie quarterback not to get bothered at all and hang in and make that throw. Seahawks back in 49er territory at the 35-yard line. They fake the stretch to Lynch. Wilson going to throw this one away. And as you said about Alex Smith earlier, smart move, get rid of the football. No problem with that. And, you know, you talked about this young man, Russell Wilson. Alex added to it. What impressed me was his conversation about his father. Yeah. You know, when we were sitting there at the table and 
His father played football and baseball at Dartmouth, as Russell obviously has. He said, you know, when I was seven years old, Dad would wake <laughs> us up at 5.45 in the morning, and we'd be throwing speed outs in right. the backyard. And I'm just sitting there thinking, how cool is that, you know? Russell's dad passed away a couple years ago, but had a tremendous influence on this young fella. He's in the shotgun and all alone right now, second down and ten. Rushes out of the pocket. Willis is going to bring him down. A Bowman, I should say, at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Willis was actually out wide with the running back. And Bowman, I call him the state trooper. I mean, this guy's <laughs> going to flag you down. He's so fast. It, it's to me, you think you have something, and the kid is so fast, he closes down the lane. First team all pro. Ian Willis both. Pro Bowlers last year. Third down at 10. Last time they had a long yardage. Wilson found Sidney Rice. They're going to keep this one on the ground to Leon Washington. Draw play only nets about two yards. Justin Smith made the tackle. That tells you how much confidence Pete Carroll has in his defense. Third and 10. Spread the field. Run the ball inside. They're going to end up having to punt this. Or they're, I guess they're going to try a long field goal. Yep, he's already hit one from about yep. the same spot that he's lining up this one. Hit one from 52 earlier and 35. This will be just a little bit shorter than the first one. 51-yard field goal attempt by Stephen Hoshka. Points are tough in this one to come by. They'll use all the threes they can get, and they didn't get this one. Wide left which gives great field position on the missed field goal back to San Francisco. I said points are hard to come by. They didn't get any on that one. Still 6-3. Wake up with NFL AM, the only morning show dedicated to the NFL. Tomorrow morning, complete highlights and reaction from players about tonight's game. Also, London Fletcher is going to join the crew to discuss her upcoming showdown with the Giants. And Plaxico Burris will be in studio with Eric Davis and company to take a look at the latest news and highlights. Getting you ready for the weekend. NFL AM tomorrow morning. Alex Smith, play fake. Throws a crossing route to Frank Gore. And Gore's got five or six. Alex is playing this pretty conservatively after yeah, three interceptions last week. I thought he was going to take the whole shot, which is the, the area between the corner and safety and cover two. Instead, he checked it down, picked up five yards on first down. Door goes out. Frank took a pretty big shot at the end of that play, and he's kind of twisting and turning to make sure everything's in the right spot. Remember, they activated Brandon Jacobs for the first time this year. We could see him tonight. Roman Davis, the tight end, is yet to catch a pass for San Francisco. He's the guy in motion. And it's Hunter. Seahawks stretch that out. Bobby Wagner, the rookie middle linebacker, brings him down after only about a yard. And, Ness, this kid jumps off on tape. I mean, Bobby Wagner, second-round pick out of Utah State. I would make the case that this kid right here is a candidate for the defensive rookie of the year. Got 42 tackles, a sack and a half. Ran 4-4-6 four, four, at the combine. And because of his speed, he's got an ability to run under or over tackles and still make a play. That's a tough spot as a rookie to be a starter, middle linebacker. That's Pete's philosophy, though, right? Throw yep. him right in the deep end. Swing pass. Crabtree drops. And this one's Marcus Trufant who makes the open field stop after only a yard gain. That's a big tackle because that was third and short and two first down get, gets you into field goal. Watch what happens. Here comes Crabtree in motion. They're going to throw it to him quickly. Trufant, the nickel, comes up, just makes the shoestring tackle. If he gets a first down, they're knocking on the door for field goal range. And instead, they have to punt. We've got a timeout taken by Seattle with 5.03 remaining in the half. Pete's an interesting guy, isn't he? He sure is. He walks in that room, and there's a ton of energy as he enters. And he, you would not think, and I hate to tell this about Pete, but he's 61 years old. He's the third oldest head coach in the NFL behind Tom Coughlin and Romeo Cornell, and he looks like he's about 40. <laughs> you, you would never know this guy. He got his knee replaced last two years ago. 
He warms his quarterbacks up. Look at him. I mean, I love watching this guy coach. Former Jets coach, still had dark hair. Then the Patriots, the hair starting to lighten up a little bit. And then a couple of national championships in his stint with the Trojans of USC. And now here in his third season as the head man of the Seahawks and has him off to a 4-2 and two start. He loves throwing those rookies in. To him, you draft them for a reason. You know, on defense, Bruce Irvin, the first-round pick, Bobby Wagner, Greg Scruggs. They've got three or four guys contributing on defense. And on offense, Turbin, you know, he throws them in and says, you got to prove to me you can't play. Where other teams look at rookies and say, you got to prove you can play. Lee would like to knock one out of bounds inside the 10 here. High kick, fair catch, taken back around the 14-yard line by Leon Washington. Well, on Sundays, NFL Network brings you everything you need to know from sunrise through the final gun on Sunday night. First down the field, 7 a.m. Eastern with live reports from all the big game sites. From 9 to 1, game day morning prepares you for all the Sunday games with the most complete information and analysis available. At 4 o'clock, we break down all the early games, game day scoreboard, and then recap all the day's action on game day highlights at 7.30. Finally, you can end your Sunday with game day final at 11.30 Eastern for highlights, press conferences, and analysis of all the games, including live reports from the Sunday night football game. Sunday is game day here on NFL Network. A lot of stuff going on around the leg there, Brad. Philadelphia fires Juan Castillo, their defensive coordinator. Yep, a lot of stuff going on on the field right now, too. Too much. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, receiving team. That's half the distance to the goal. First down. Well, that's pretty costly to the Seahawks. And Pete Carroll saying, you sure it wasn't that way? First penalty against Seattle. Now, there's a conversation going on here. They're not sure they called this correctly. Pete's pretty sure it goes against the 49ers. And the officials are still talking about yep. it. Yep, I'm going to... And, and I'll tell you what. There are two fouls in different areas. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness on the receiving team. And after the play, personal foul number 54 of the kicking team. Those fouls will all set at the dead ball spot. First down. Yeah, I saw Larry Grant on San Francisco take a cheap shot at the end of the play. I know I saw that. Watch at the end of this. Number 54 right in here. Larry Grant. Takes the shot to the helmet. I think that was, uh, I couldn't see a number there. I think it was K.J. Wright. Yeah, it was. Well, they're going to take it where the... I'm not sure they marked this correctly. Where the punt was fielded was at the 14-yard line, wasn't it? Was yeah. it the 14? Yeah, I think so. 13 or 14. Because that's where Leon Washington made the fair catch. little confusion here candlestick right now. I feel like I'm back in preseason. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Two of the most competitive coaches you'll ever run into. the spot at the end of the pit. I think they got it right. Yeah. So here we go. After all of that, just five minutes of our life we'll never get back. That's all. <laughs> First down at the 14. Seahawks with a field goal lead. Marshawn Lynch straight up the middle. Just keeps those wheels turning all the way out to the 29-yard line. Uh, you know, he is so strong in his lower body. People bounce off of him. The inside linebackers. Well, watch the inside linebackers when he gets into the hole. Does a real good job cutting back behind McQuiston right there. Patrick Willis can't get him. He keeps the lower body just churning. 50 yards already on eight carries for Lynch here in the first half. And a first down at the 29. They'll feed him again. Got the corner, broke a tackle. Still on his feet again. That's the deal right there. That's it. Man. Same thing, Brad. You think he's down. You think Alden Smith has him. He I'm always amazed. There's Alden Smith. There's one tackle. Now he's going to cut back inside. Two There's tackles. Another. There's three tackles. Jersey's not going to do it, Alden. <laughs> Remember Justin Smith we met with yesterday? He said, this guy reminds him a lot of Jamal Lewis. Justin Smith, the only guy to go back that far. Yeah, exactly. 
Here's Turbin, the rookie now. He's got the corner down the sideline. He's a little change of pace. He's got a little more straight speed probably than Marshawn Lynch, and he gets 14 yards. Yeah, that's exactly right. He does have that speed. Alden Smith got caught inside. Robert Turbin, a rookie, also out of Utah State. You figure the guy that's a scout that got Turbin and the middle linebacker out of Utah State maybe got a raise or <laughs> don't see a lot of guys from Utah State. <laughs> yeah, so Wagner in the second round, Turbin in the fourth. The common denominator is they both fly. And they've flown out to the 49-yard line with a first down. Turbin again. Puts his head down, gets to the 48, maybe the 47. We're now to three minutes remaining in the half. Hard fought, exactly what we expected so far. 6-3. Two field goals for Hoshka and one for Akers. And we spoke with Vic Fangio, the defense coordinator for San Francisco, asked him about Marshawn Lynch. He said he broke more tackles on us than any other back in the NFL. And then he told a story about being back in Baltimore with Rex Ryan and trying to convince Rex that that kid, Lynch, was the best back that we're going to see all year. And Rex finally said, you know what, you're, you're right. right. <laughs> Four straight runs on this drive. Make it five. Turbin bounces to the 45. It'll bring up third down and four. And we got a uh, penalty marker down. Holding, number 76, offense. 10-yard penalty, second down. Okun, the left tackle. So that's going to back them up on their side of the 50. Right at the point of attack, Okung's trying to get a hook block here. And you can see the left arm and then the right arm. That's just a tackle on DeMarcus Dobbs. That's well called. And every once in a while, Brad, they catch it. 2.23 on the game clock. Clock will wind on my signal. Well, they spot it back at the 43-yard line. Interesting to see here how aggressive Daryl Bevel, the offensive coordinator, will be. You're up a field goal. It's a defensive game. You've got second and forever late in the first half. You know, I'm thinking, if I'm a defensive player right now, I'm thinking screen, alert screen, alert draw, check down. Russell Wilson's going to let the clock go down here Yep. near the two-minute warning. Headlinesman and Pete Carroll telling jokes over there on the sideline as we have reached the two-minute warning. Pretty emotional coaches, Jim Harbaugh, Pete Carroll, tight game, two-minute warning, Seahawks by three. Rich Eisen asks you to stay tuned for the Lexus Halftime Show. We take a look at what's up with the Niners offense, and Melissa Stark talks to the Ravens about life after Ray Lewis. Brad? All right, Rich, see you guys in two minutes. Second down at 16. As Mike said, it'll be interesting to see if the Seahawks give Russell Wilson a chance to throw here, they will. He's got all day, and he's going deep down the sideline. And just off the hands of Golden Tate, Deshaun Goldson was covering. Golden Tate, one of the more demonstrative wide receivers in the league. Carlos Rogers looks for safety help over the top. Here it comes, Goldston. He's out of bounds. I didn't see the, uh, the side judge's hat come off. But he was out of bounds clearly. Now you got to be careful on third down and long here. Remember, the 49ers are out of timeouts. But basically, that incompletion stopped things for them. And the Seahawks are not good on third down and 10 or more. That wasn't a decision I really liked by the rookie quarterback there. Safety's over the top. Clearly, it wasn't available. I'd much rather have seen him pull it down. Now they run out of time with the play clock and it'll take a five-yard penalty unless they got the first down. They got the timeout in the nick of time. So Seattle down to one timeout and third down and 16. If they're going to throw, you would think maybe something safe, right? If you're going to throw it, it's got to be something where the clock continues to run. You don't want to give San Francisco an opportunity here. And, you know, I think if there's one highlight for... The Seattle offense in the first half, it's got to be Marshawn Lynch. Right. You talk about yards after initial contact. You could pick almost any run, but look at the first one. Helmet to helmet with Golston. Runs him over for an extra six. Right there. How far does he go after the initial contact by Alden Smith? Another ten. He runs through tackles, and Brad, I could pick just about any one of his runs. Look at this one. Run through that. Turn, drop the pad level. It doesn't really matter which run you pick. He keeps the legs churning, 
and I really believe he's the most underrated tailback in the NFL. Three wide receivers for Russell Wilson here at third and 16. He's got to be careful against this 49er defense. He's going to roll to throw, and he's going to go deep again. Out there is Tate, and in and out of his hands, Chris Culliver was covering. Usually I would say that's a great job by a young quarterback giving his wide receiver a chance to win one-on-one. However, in a situational football, like the last two minutes of the game where you're of a half where you're up six to three, I would much rather him tuck the football, get as many yards as he could, and either get the first down or keep the clock going. Instead, they've got to kick it away, and now the 49ers still have a minute 44 to work with. Yeah, he just has to learn a little bit more, I think, about situational football. John Ryan to punt. Ted Ginn Jr. runs over on it on the 11-yard line. Ginn reverses his steal. Now he's got blocking. Cross the 40. Ginn to midfield. And into Seattle territory, the 49-yard line. So just like that, San Francisco's got an opportunity to get some points here before halftime. 45-yard punt, but a 39-yard run back. And this is a mismatch. Look at Michael Robinson, a fullback, all by himself in the open field. He won't even lay a glove on him. And now he's out the gate. And at this point, you're just kind of holding on to your collective head saying, "Uh uh-oh, if you're a Seahawk fan. Remember, he did it. As a kickoff return man and a punt return, both for touchdowns last year against Seattle, and he almost got him one right there. Again, right at midfield now. Yep. Plenty of time to work with for Alex Smith. I go back to the play selection at the end of the half, and, and I'd be running that clock down in a game like this. I don't want them to have another opportunity. 49ers have hit a dry spell over their offense. No touchdowns in the last game and a half. Look, this... Seattle defense is the number two ranked defense in the league in points allowed. 15.6 a game. Chicago's the only defense that's allowed less. So we knew this was going to be a tightly fought battle with special teams and defense. You've got to limit opportunities, though, for each offense. 49ers, the last two times they had it, three and outs. They want to use this 127 to their best abilities. Three wide outs to Alex Smith left. And Randy Moss down here on the bottom. He looked that way. Yep. Now he's in trouble. Here comes the Seahawks. He just lobs this one out of bounds. Greg Scruggs was the guy that was applying the pressure. Randy Moss was out wide with Richard Sherman. They looked initially right at him, but Sherman's got his hands on him. (laughs) We talked about this all week long. This is how these defensive backs play in Seattle. And Crabtree on the other side. Yep, double covering him. Chancellor coming over. Again, Randy Moss comes out to the near side on second down at 10. Kendall Hunter in the backfield, and now he'll flush out of there. Empty set for Smith. Was down the middle, incomplete. Vernon Davis, I guess, was the closest guy. Chris Clemens was applying pressure. Jason Jones actually dropped back in coverage on that play. So it's third down and 10. And the ball wasn't touched. I mean, Jason Jones, as you said, the defensive lineman dropped back in his own coverage. A little bit of a face mask. Wow. It's kind of of hard to complete a pass when you can't see where it's going. Didn't see that initially. Yeah, I didn't either. So third down and 10. Smith, again, will go down at midfield. And Scruggs again was applying pressure. Second sack of the ball game. <laughs> you know, it's just a street fight out wide. Here comes Sherman again with Crabtree. Watch, watch what happens with the infighting the hands. Watch the hands. It's the hands on him here. He's holding back again, holding again. I mean, that's what these San Francisco 49ers wide receivers have to understand. They're in it for the long haul tonight, and you've got to win those situations. Now the 49ers like to use as much clock as possible before they snap this to Lee, their putter. In fact, they might take it all the way down and let him back up five yards. Nope, they're going to get rid of it now. 
And Washington with a fair catch. Back at about the nine-yard line. Big defensive backs, kind of like the old Steelers. 1981, I was drafted by the Steelers, and Mel Blunt was a corner that actually played so physically <laughs> they changed the rules. And I look at Sherman, and I see a similar guy. Look at Mel Blunt on Drew Pearson. It was all about the hands. Again, Browner, hands to the face. They were so tough and physical. He and Donnie Shell, and here we are again. Hands on, hands on, you're allowed five yards. That's the rule that was changed, the five-yard rule, and it was all because the guy they called Soup, short for Superman in Pittsburgh. Final play of the half as Russell Wilson takes a knee. And we expected low scoring, physical. We've got exactly what we were planning on. End of the first half. Lex's halftime show with Rich and the guys coming up. Seahawks on the road, trying to go to 5-2. and two. Still got a whole bunch of football left at Candlestick. 6-3 at halftime. Just about set to start the second half. Marshawn Lynch has been most of the offense tonight for the Seahawks. He's got them in line for those two Hoshka field goals. And a three-point lead for Seattle. Welcome back to Candlestick, everybody. Brad Nestler with Mike Mayock. About an hour and a half ago, partner, you said we're going to have a lot of gore, a lot of uh, Lynch, <laughs> and a lot of defense. And that's what we've had. But, you know, if there's plays that were left out there, I think it was Seattle's side. You and I have been around long enough to know that in games like this, miss op missed opportunities can come back to haunt you. And Seattle's had two of those tonight. Rookie fourth-round pick, Robert Turbin. They got man-to-man -man on Patrick Willis, and Turbin dropped a perfectly thrown football. Probably could have, would have been a touchdown. And then Evan Moore, six foot six tight end, no catches on the year, had a chance to make a play and drops it. And all I know, Brad, is, yeah, Russell Wilson's played pretty well. They're both running the ball okay. But it's all about the defense, the toughness, and the physicality of this game. And we'll have more of the same in the next two quarters. Get tape tight. We're in for another two-quarter battle as we had in the first half. Akers to kick, and Leon Washington is back deep. Top spot in the NFC West, at least for the next three days, on the line in the next hour and a half. And Leon Washington watches this one go out the back of the end zone as we check in with Alex. Hey, Brad, well, we might be getting the defensive battle that we expected, not exactly what Pete Carroll expected. He told me just a few minutes ago that he didn't like the way that his defense played in the first quarter of this game. He said they weren't sharp, they weren't tackling well, although he did say that they rebounded nicely, and he'll expect that continue in the second half of this game. He did say, Mike, in regards to those missed opportunities, that he wasn't too bothered by them. He says that nothing really bad happened in the first half of this game. They just need to get after it a little harder in the second. <laughs> nothing really bad, nothing Nothing really good, right? No turnovers so far. Here's Lynch, and Marshawn Lynch starts the third quarter like he ended the second quarter. Nine yards before Alden Smith can bring him down. Yeah, I like what they did there because they got into a two-back set, no tight ends, minimized the numbers in the box, and just let him come downhill. Second down and a yard. Tight end McCoy sets up now on the right side as the run will come to the left. And Lynch, first down easily, out to the 34, maybe the 35-yard line. Brad, this is what this game's all about. Watch Russell Okung and stay on him, okay? Watch him drive Justin Smith with some help from Carpenter. Stay on him, stay on him, stay on him. That is a great block against one of the best players he's down there on the bottom of the pile you don't ever see that that's what tonight's all about russell okun great job and a first down at the 36 yard line high backfield behind wilson they just keep pumping marshawn lynch behind his fullback robinson and he's out to the 40. Quarterback comparison tonight, Russell Wilson hasn't done anything wrong. Had a couple passes dropped there. His numbers would have been more impressive than 103 yards. Alex Smith really hasn't gotten anything going for the 49ers. And 
Actually, the last couple times they had the football, there's a few boo birds out here at Candlestick. I, I'm a little surprised they haven't gotten their tight ends more involved. In the last year, they were a tight end oriented pass game. Delaney Walker, Vernon Davis. I, I, I expect to see some of that this half. Here's Turbin in to give Lynch a breather. And he only got about two. Ahmad Brooks and Patrick Willis and company bring him down. And it's going to bring up a third down here on the opening drive of the quarter for the Seahawks. Interesting how it's a little different pace when Marshawn Lynch is not in the game for their run game. I mean, he, Marshawn Lynch is so patient. He understands that zone scheme so well that they actually block it better for him than Turbin. Talk about tight ends. They haven't thrown anything to Zach Miller's way either. The Seahawks tight end. Third down at four. They're going to keep it on the ground. Leon Washington, he's not going to get there. A couple yards shy, and Seattle's got a kick. Patrick Willis with another play. Yeah, this is great defense because Patrick Willis from behind, and Alden Smith sets the edge. Alden Smith does a great job setting the edge, allowing Willis to chase it down from behind. His linebacker's so rangy for the 49ers. And now John Ryan's got to punt it away. Ted Ginn Jr. back at the 10-yard line. He's had one of the biggest plays of the night. But it didn't net the 49ers any points. This one, he's going to have to share a catch. And I think he wishes, well, there's a penalty marker down, and he maybe knew that. With that fair catch, I think he thought better of returning it when he was going to get another chance anyway. Well, I think uh, Walt Anderson pointed the wrong way. <laughs> At least that's my guess. Number 83 of the defense lined up over the center. That's a five-yard penalty for an eagle formation. Okay. Uh, First that's down. That's, that's one you don't see very often. You know, Brad... Special teams is, is, is a tough thing in this league. Look, look at right here. Gets pushed about seven or eight yards behind all the personnel. Come on, get back on the field, big boy. Where are you going, man? <laughs> Jim Harbaugh talking to the headlinesman. I still don't know if we've got this penalty straight. Apparently we do. all the way out near the 40-yard line marker. And he's getting ready to throw a challenge flag here. <laughs> he's yelling at Walt Anderson, the referee. You go, Walt, get over Walt, here, man. Walt, I need to talk to you. You, you need to see my photos. I'm going to text you in a minute here. Wow. So it was more than two. That's a first down. At the 49 yard line. Illegal formation. That's a, the new point of emphasis this year with the punt team. Play action. Wilson wants to throw back to his left, looking and going to run out of time here pretty soon. Justin Smith giving chase, and he lofts it down the sideline, harmlessly incomplete. You called it right, too. He wanted to throw back to Lynch, and Alden Smith was squatting on him. Bootleg, really good job by Vic Fangio's defense. Look at the contain out wide. He can't get outside right, so he's going to cut back away from Justin Smith. Now, where do you go with it? Nah, throw it away. I like the decision there, young man. Only one of his last six, though, Russell Wilson. Got to start completing so. Second down from the 49. Lynch. Gets into the second level, another seven or eight yard run. Boy, did they, nice job by the right side of the line that time. They had two extra tight ends in the game there. Zach Miller right there and McCoy watched the block down and up to the second level. Really good job. And then, of course, we've talked a lot about Lynch, and, and that's his story right there. Drop the pad level, run over Culliver, and finish the run. Let's see if he gets it again. Second down, and a third down, rather, and a long two. He's in there, but Wilson's in the shotgun. 
Blitz coming. Quick slant in and out of the hands of Golden Tate. Probably should have had it. Probably. Probably was in coverage. <laughs> Probably, partner. Oh, man, you win inside. You, you, he beats Culliver inside. Now, catch the football. It's put right on you. And again, third drop pass of the evening for Seattle. I hate keep coming back to this, but Brad, this is like a turnover. If you catch the football, it's a first down. Now you're punting. I told you at halftime off the air, I couldn't be a quarterback because I'd bring those guys back and say, would you please, please <laughs> catch your football? And not that nicely because I know you. Right. The 14, fair catch. 49ers have it back offensively, trailing by three. Seahawks, if they lose this one, they're going to say what could have been. Too many drop balls. Good play in the secondary tonight, Mike. Seattle's in single high safety more than any team in the NFL, which puts a ton of pressure on your corners. But these corners are so long, and they play such good defense. Look at them. They're in single high. Everybody's covered up. They force Alex Smith to pull the football down and throw it away. Again, Alex Smith, who does he want? Sherman's all over Crabtree. It's not there. Force him to pull it down, and he gets sacked. Back to the live action at the 14-yard line. Looks one way. Smith comes back across the middle of Frank Gore. And Gore out for a first down at the 29-yard line. I thought that was the best play that Alex Smith has had this game. And it doesn't look like much, but I like the way he scans the field and checks it down. It's play action, which I like. Watch him scan to his right, back to his left. Looks everybody off. The linebackers all the way down the field. Wagner, look at the eyes come right back down. I'll take that all day long. Just a good job by a veteran quarterback looking off in his own defense. First first down for the 49ers since late in the first quarter. Play fake for Smith. Got a man wide open in the flat. This is Hunter. Kendall Hunter is going to have another first down. Okay. Got a little pace going here, right? Both check. One's a check down to a tailback. The next will flare to a tailback. I like it. Those wide receivers are really having a problem out wide. I like what Coach Harbaugh is doing with saying, okay, we can't win right now out wide, so we'll check it down to our talented backs. As rough a night as Alex Smith has had, those couple passes might get him in rhythm here. And that's kind of what it takes. And a little bit of play action, make a couple completions, and all of a sudden you sense a, a different urgency with the offense. Kill, kill, kill. Kill, kill. New play. And Vernon Davis in motion. And it's Gore off the left side, and he just about broke it into the secondary. Offensive coordinator Greg Roman said this is the best point of insertion runner he has for traps and dives. Watch the center come over here and get a block. It's just a quick hitter. 49, the fullback gets the trap. Look at the cut. Bruce Miller, so between Bruce Miller and Jonathan Goodwin, it's a quick hit and play. And Gore with the heavy lower body, just like Marshawn Lynch. Second down at four. Oops. Brandon Meebane jumped in the neutral zone unless he was drawn off. It should be a free first down for San Francisco. It's only their second penalty in the game. Number 92, defense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Frank Gore standing next to Walt Anderson. You know, there's been some good backs in 49er history. He's the best. Joe Perry, second place. Roger Craig, Ken Willard back in the 60s and 70s. And he's on top coming in tonight, 8,095. And he's added to it, obviously, this evening. Hey, there's some great names across the top of this stadium as you look yeah. around, you know. And you just see the, the history and tradition in this great building. Oh, my goodness. Alex Smith goes to Frank Gore over the middle. And that's been the best pass play of the night so far for the 49ers. Those little dump-offs to number 21. Yeah, he wanted Kyle Williams quickly, but again, his wide receiver's not winning. He looked to his left immediately. Kyle Williams, looked, watch his eyes, all the way back left. Okay, I'll check it down. So, Brad, I think they made an adjustment at halftime, and they said, Alex, look, if it's not there out wide, check it down. Let our backs get on their backers. And he got on him for 12 more yards down to the 37-yard line. Here's Vernon Davis splitting out wide on a corner. He hasn't been a factor at all so far tonight. Yeah, and it needs to be, Brad. Gore straight up the middle. Frank Gore almost broke it again. And he's got something working this drive. 11 more yards this time 
on the ground. Quick hitter again. Watch your potty, the guard, come across and get the key blocked. Gore reads it, gets up the field. Good job by Goodwin. Alex Boone, the right guard, gets on the backer. And like you said, Brad, he almost broke it. And there's a completely different look to this series for the 49ers. Sure is. They're loading up with extra tight ends. First down, the 26-yard line of Seattle. Gore again. Very tough couple of yards that time. Yeah, it, it's check downs in the pass game, and it's that quick run game. Remember Vic Fangio talking to us yesterday and saying, I like Frank Gore either in the I formation or the pistol because he's such an old-school downhill back. Nice balance tonight for Frank. 58 on the ground, mm. 51 as a receiver. He gets a breather here, and Kendall Hunter comes in to take his spot. I like Greg Roman. I, I I really like the adjustments he made at halftime, and now they've got a finish in the red zone. Second and seven, toss sweep, Kendall Hunter. Nice job, penetration by Bobby, uh, K.J. Wright, I should say, the outside linebacker. Good call, Brad Nessler, and that's what made the play is the second-year player from Mississippi State blew up Joe Staley. Staley, the left tackle, is going to pull out 74. Look at K.J. Wright. Yes. That's a wonderful job. Be aggressive. Try and beat that tackle. Third down and nine. Biggest play of the quarter so far. San Francisco desperate to score a touchdown before seven quarters pass without one. Empty backfield. Smith. Quick toss over the middle. Complete to Crabtree. He's got a first down. He's down inside the 15. Crowd starting to come to life a little bit of candlestick. Yeah, this is cool. Vernon Davis ran the clear so the Crabtree could check it down behind. Watch Davis clear it, and Crabtree will just hook it right in behind him. There goes the clear. There's the check down. That's really good offensive structure. 49ers have it at the Seahawks 15-yard line as Frank Gore is back in the San Francisco backfield. Six first downs on this drive, matching what they did the entire first half. They're in the pistol again. And it's Frank Gore again. Gore carrying Leroy Hill with him for a couple of yards. And we're down to the five-minute mark of the third quarter. Pistol means that the quarterback's in shotgun, but the tailback is behind him. Okay, you're allowed to go downhill. Here comes the defensive tackle here who's going to try and get the defensive end, Irvin. Irvin does a good job coming under it, forcing the tailback to run the hump. Tenth play of the San Francisco drive. Will they keep running or Alex Smith cut one loose here? Put him soon. Screaming for a tight end. Second and seven, throws across the middle again, complete, heading to the corner. Walker to the one. There's your tight end. The official spotted it at the one-yard line, but let's see if he got in. He's in. Oh, that's a touchdown. And nice job by Delaney Walker dancing the tightrope. Wow. Getting that left foot down. That is ballerina-like. That's pretty sweet for a guy his size. Talking about six feet, 242 field. pounds. A touchdown. He did rule a touchdown on yep. the field. The official on the far side had his foot down at the one-yard line. But it's a touchdown. And we, finally, the 49ers are in the end zone. <laughs> and Brad, you and I have been screaming for that tight end. Look at these guys having fun. Great atmosphere. Been a long dry spell without a touchdown. Finally, they've got one, and now they've got the lead. If you're going to run the football the way San Francisco does, and if you have two very gifted tight ends, you've got to get them involved. And last year, they were the focal point in their pass attack. This year, not so much. Akers has been waiting a game and a half to kick an extra point. <laughs> and he's got it. And it capped an 86-yard drive in 10 plays. Finally, the 49ers find the end zone. And now they find themselves in front. 10-6. 10-6, San Francisco. On a 12-yard touchdown pass. Smith to that guy, Walker. All about the two tight ends in this play. 
We're going to have Walker come across and watch the linebacker drop too deep into the end zone. Both linebackers are now in the end zone, and there's nobody underneath. So it's an easy throw, and then look at the block up here. The other tight end, Vernon Davis, gets the block, and then Brad Nessler, the referee trailing, marks it down <laughs> on the one-yard one. line right there. He doesn't call the touchdown and gets overruled eventually. 49ers fired up now. So is the crowd of Candlestick. 69,000 strong. Acres to kick. Line drive. And on the back of the end zone, we'll bring it out to the 20. And we got more fisticuffs. Two teams aren't crazy about each other. They both want to be in first place in the NFC West when the night's over. And they're physical and they're fast and they're tough and they're chirping. There's the only touchdown of the night. 49ers in front. Alex Smith, Delaney Walker, just hooked up. Ninth touchdown pass of the year for Alex. You can get access to coaches' film and full game replays from the first six weeks of the season on demand in HD. New low price now available at NFL.com slash Game Rewind. Brad Nessler, Mike Mayock, Alex Flanagan, and our NFL Network crew at Candlestick, where the Seahawks are behind for the first time tonight. And now the rookie quarterback's got him at the 20-yard line with Marshawn Lynch, who's had a big night behind him. He fakes it to him. Wilson in trouble in the pocket. Got away. And now he uses his feet and gets almost 10 yards. We're getting an interesting football game now, Brad. Play action. They were looking for a deep shot there. They had a crossing route coming from right to left, and he's looking to get deep over here. However, because of pressure, Russell Wilson steps up and through, uses that 4-5 speed to get down the field. I don't know how he ever got out of that pocket, but he got nine yards, almost ten. That's the middle infielder in him right there. Right, exactly. Lynch met by Bowman in the hole, but he got the first down. So Seattle trying to answer after that long touchdown drive by the 49ers that carried them 86 yards in 10 plays and used about 6 minutes, 20 seconds. So you look in on a beautiful night in San Francisco at Candlestick Park. I've been in this city in August when I was freezing my tail off. It's a beautiful day and night here in October. First down at the 31. Tight end McCoy sets up on the left side. They're going to run that way. And Lynch, about three, maybe four tough yards. And a little bit slow to get up this time. And San Francisco's trying to make it more difficult in the run game. Single high safety, meaning they're dropping that extra safety into the box. Dante Whitner that time dropped down. He only got a couple on that carry. So yep. Second and eight. Chance of defense on the fans of Candlestick. Second down and eight. Blitz coming. Play action. Wilson, look out. Got rid of it just in time, but he throws into double coverage and it's intercepted. Picked off by Deshaun Goldson. First mistake of the night. Great pressure up the middle. That ball fluttered a little bit because of this hit on Wilson. And on the other end, Deshaun Goldson's got the first turnover of the night. 49er ball when we come back. Deshaun Goldson, who made his first Pro Bowl appearance last year with his second interception of the season. I like the play here. Watch the linebacker get blocked by Unger, and then the second backer, Bowman, beats Unger because he's late coming off Willis, forces the errant throw, and this is like a center fielder. Playing deep, make the catch, and Ness all of a sudden, right? Things are changing, and look at Sidney Rice, a little frustrated. There goes the mouthpiece. Hey, your rookie quarterback's on his back. He can't see you. So the first turnover of the night gives the 49ers an opportunity on their own 27-yard line. Frank Gore spins his way to the 30, pick up a three. Cam Chancellor made first hit, and then Bobby Wagner cleaned up. 
We uh, we haven't seen any Colin Kaepernick tonight, have no, we? we? Haven't. I just remind me they ran what I call the inverted bone there, an inverted wishbone, where where it's a heavy run set for them. And when Colin Kaepernick's in the game, who kind of adds a, a run element out of the quarterback position. The Cap Cat offense we have not seen yet tonight. Alex Smith, who was sensational on the last drive, has all day to throw, and now he's going to run for what he can. And I think he got a first down. Yes, he did. So Alex Smith showing his running ability. You know I mentioned that? earlier that what they like to do is get in the run set and leave Randy Moss out here by himself and try to throw a vertical off play action. But again, Browner wins. Moss gets no separation. Look at him right here. That's easy coverage right there for Browner, and it forces the veteran quarterback to pull the ball down. You know, that last drive when they scored the touchdown, they had great balance. Five runs, five passes. Smith was five for five to four different guys. He's in a rhythm right now yep. with a minute to go in the third quarter. Door. Still going. I think he was down, but he's definitely down now. This game is not for the faint of heart. There's some collisions out there on every snap. I think we said that in the open. Yeah, we, we did. Faint you were of right. heart. It, uh -huh. You know, I really enjoyed watching the tape of both these teams, and, and he's trying to get past his own tackle there, and there goes the hand, the knees. He's down. But, Brad, this NFC West two years ago was a mess. Winning team in division, Seattle went 7-9. and nine. Right. Now you got two, all four teams playing really good defense, and it's fun to see. Remember, the Cardinals are watching this game, too, because they still share the top spot in the division. Whoever wins this one tonight will have it. Kyle Williams into Seattle territory. Pickup of 18 more. On time, out of the slot, probably their best route runner, Kyle Williams. Different pace to this offense. The game looks different. The San Francisco 49ers get a stop on defense, and here they come on offense. I said a few moments ago, whoever wins this one tonight will be the leader in the clubhouse at least for the next three days before <laughs> Arizona plays and St. Louis likewise. But a much improved NFC West, maybe the most improved and most balanced right now in football. And uh, they've done a good job outside their division as well. The best so far this year. We start the fourth quarter with the Seahawks trailing. 49ers with the ball. And their offense in sync right now. Alex Smith to Gore, and he's dropped immediately. Nice play on defense by K.J. Wright. Loss of about three. There haven't been too many no gains or lost yardage plays tonight. It's like San Francisco's kind of settling into a little bit of that pistol, downhill, quick insertion run game. Now it's backed up to the 45-yard line, second down at 12. Kill, kill, kill. Kill. Total yardage almost identical between these two teams tonight. Gore up the middle, Frank Gore. Gore with one man to beat. All the way down inside the 10. And the first time this year, the Seahawks have allowed somebody to go over the 100-yard mark rushing, and Frank Gore is pretty much doing it on his own. Same play, just a trap play. This time, it's the right guard, Boone, coming across. And watch how quickly they hit this. He gets in behind the center, Goodwin. The right guard pulls, and now it's Katie bar the door. And a lot of green grass. First and goal, 49ers trying to take advantage of the interception. Kendall Hunter tries the right side, and he got near the five before he swarmed under by the Seahawks defense. There's still some conversations going on here. <laughs> Brad, that started on the opening kickoff. It hasn't stopped. They've got that big defensive tackle in the ball game as a lead blocker along with Bruce Miller. And they're just saying, we're coming downhill. You guys got to try and stop us. Second and goal at the six. And now 
Kaepernick in at quarterback. Yep. Had to happen. Alert quarterback run, quarterback draw, quarterback keep an option. Keeps it. Oh, almost got decapitated. Loss on the play. And that's okay. He's a running back. He's not a quarterback at that point. Zone read. He's going to fake. And watch number 79. This is a 300-pound defensive tackle. Red Bryant. Look him take an angle. Force him to run the hump. Ooh. And he gets some help at the end of the play. That's a heck of a job by a 300-pounder. Loss of a yard. Alex Smith back in. Randy Moss and Michael Crabtree to the top of your screen on third down and goal. Walker, the tight end, in motion. Smith looks right, back to the left. Now flushed out of the pocket, throws on the run, intercepted in the end zone. Brandon Browner. And the 49ers make a mistake. Wow, he had Randy Moss along the back line of the end zone the entire time. He forces it. Browder gets it back for the Seahawks, deep in their own territory. Wasn't a great throw by Alex Smith on that last play, I'll say that much. It was a bad decision and a worse throw. Randy Moss is going to come along. He's going to beat Earl Thomas and run the back line of the end zone. He's wide open. The interesting part of this play is Frank Gore is pointing him out. Look, he's pointing. He's wide open. Throw it to him. And instead, Browner with the interception gives it back to Seattle at their own three-yard line. And now Lynch is all wrapped up, and the ball is out. They're going to say he was down before the ball came out. And that would have been a huge turnover. Let's take a look at this. Still fighting ball in the left hand. Welcome. That looks to me like that ball's out before anything hits. I didn't... But Seattle comes up with it, I believe. Well, a ruling on the field, and there comes a challenge from Jim Harbaugh. Ruling on the field was that he was down before the ball came out. We'll take a look at it. The ruling by the officials is that forward progress of Lynch was stopped. Not a reviewable play. No timeout taken away from Jim Harbaugh, but he doesn't win a challenge because he couldn't have one. Second down at 10. Lynch again. And this time he leans ahead to about the nine-yard line. I'm not sure it even matters because you know who gets the ball. But here's the ref at the end pointing at the ground saying he was down. I called it dead. Forward progress was over. So now third down, the biggest third down of the game for the Seahawks. Try to get out to the 13-yard line just to keep the drive moving. Third down and four for Russell Wilson in the shotgun. Oh, and Marshawn Lynch drops another one. Not sure he would have gotten much out of it, but he doesn't hold on to the ball either. That's the fifth drop pass by Seattle tonight. They had that set up pretty well, too. I, I think they're one of the better tailback screen teams in the league. Lynch sneaks out. The ball's thrown low and behind him, but Marshawn's got to catch that. What's John Ryan at a tough spot deep in his own end zone to punt? And that's a dangerous man right there. If he can get his hands on it cleanly. High kick. Peg in from the 35. Coming near side. 25. Midfield. Almost broke it. Gets it back in Seattle territory. An 18-yard punt return. Jim Hallbar. His team in front, and they've got the ball when we come back. 10-11 remaining in the fourth quarter. San Francisco in front by four. Don't forget, next week, we hope you join us from Minneapolis. A.D., all day, Adrian Peterson, Christian Ponder, Percy Harvin and company. The Vikings, a surprise team in the NFC against Josh Freeman and company and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers.
Hope you join us from Minneapolis next Thursday night. How about the 4-2 and two Minnesota Vikings hosting the 4-2 and two Arizona Cardinals this weekend? Big huh? game. Yeah, man. We're going to have fun in uh, Minneapolis next week. Now, I don't want to let this go past, Brad, without saying that we kind of lost track of Alex Smith and that interception because of the fumble and everything down there. That's a decision a veteran quarterback can't make. It was a bad decision. It was a bad throw. And he took points off the board because, worst case, they were getting a field goal. Right. Seattle's defense, Mike, this year, 12 opponents drives have started in their territory, and they haven't given up a touchdown yet. Wow. They've given up four field goals. They'd, they'd settle for only giving up a field goal here because they still have a chance down seven. We'll see what happens. 49ers from the 49. Frank Gore. Gore busts it outside. Inside the 40 to the 39. Might have a first down. We'll wait and see. Really good job by Alex Boone, the right guard, pulled out and got in front of this thing. Watch him from over here come around and get a linebacker on the pull. In the hole right there, nice job on Bobby Wagner. Frank Gore's a man. He and Marshawn Lynch have had huge games. Wouldn't want to tackle either one of them. <laughs> and it is a first down at the 39. Frank gets a breather. 111 yards rushing, 72 this half for Frank Gore. Kendall Hunter in there for him right now. Alex Smith, straight drop, pump fakes one way, comes back across the middle to Hunter. Short game. Thomas and Wright are there to make the hit. Going back to what they did in that first successful drive in the third quarter. Checkdowns. Yep. Wide outs aren't winning outside. It's run game and checkdowns. That's what, if San Francisco wins this game, offensively, that's why they're going to win it. Frank Gore took one play off. The helmet's back on. And there's his numbers on the night. Mm. That's impressive. Second down at the 36-yard line. Crabtree and Williams up to the top of your screen. But it's more of Gore. And Frank Gore again all the way to the 15-yard line. I think Seattle's tired. They're gashing them, man. Gore on the gash. 21 more yards. Heavy to this side, but he's going to cut it back this way. Watch Goodwin the center. He gets the key block wide open. First down at the 16-yard line. Number 21 having one of those special nights that he's had a lot of. I really think the key was offensive coordinator Greg Roman's change at halftime. Now it's Hunter's turn. Kendall Hunter, positive yardage, about three. Leroy Hill brings him down. It's the quick hitting run plays, Brad. It's, it's the traps. It's the dives. Those are the ones where they're gashing them and getting to the second level immediately. He's off Frank Gore on the sideline showing the effects of how busy he's been tonight. A little bit banged up and a little bit tired. But he's got him down here with seven and a half minutes to go to take command in the football game if they can get a touchdown. And he had eight carries a week ago, and it's no coincidence they lost that football game. Second and seven. Toss sweep to Hunter. Blockers in front. He waits for them and now cuts it quickly down to about the five. Flag down. Tukuafu was the guy leading the way. Number 76, offense. 10-yard penalty, still second down. Forget the penalty. Watch Tukuafu. This is what this game's all about. How about that poor corner? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Got a 300-pound defensive tackle saying, Richard Sherman, here I come, buddy. That, that's a no-win situation. I don't care how big the corner is. That's a no-win right there. Tukuafu at 300-plus pounds with the pancake. But it all comes back. On the penalty, and that line of scrimmage is the 23-yard line with seven minutes remaining in the fourth quarter, and the 49ers leading by four. Kendall Hunter stays in there in the San Francisco backfield. And here he comes again, Kendall Hunter. Almost broke it, Leroy Hill. Might have saved a touchdown there. Mike Yapati, who is a left guard that I think has a chance to become the best guard in football. He's so big and strong. He's gifted athletically. Watch him pull up into the hole. 
locate a linebacker, use the correct shoulder on Bobby Wagner, and Kendall Hunter does a nice job with the eye. Sees it, it's up the field. 49ers can get a first down at about the six-yard line. It's third and seven. Empty backfield. Alex Smith. And it's a quarterback draw. Alex Smith got to the 10, and that's it. Ness, I've been kind of talking about this offensive line. Three first-round picks and, and what they've done in the second half. And, and there's the guy, Mike Solari, highly respected offensive line coach, has been at this a long time. And I really love the change in attitude here in the second half with the quick hitters. You know, I said a couple of minutes ago the Seahawks would welcome a field goal attempt instead of a touchdown that they haven't given one up when an opponent starts on their side of the field. And yep. here's the field goal. <laughs> and it'll make it a seven-point game if Akers is good from 28 yards out. So you don't want to go anywhere because the Seahawks are going to get the football back. And we know about their late game heroics a couple of times this year with Russell Wilson and company. The difference is a touchdown. Frank Gore has been a difference maker all night long. San Francisco 13, Seattle 6. Don't go away. Tonight's aerial coverage is being presented by Southwest Airlines. In San Francisco, we've got 524 remaining. A touchdown difference, 49ers in front. Leon Washington waiting on David Akers' kick. Washington will field it, but it's in the back of the end zone. We'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. Rookie quarterback with 524 to work. They need a touchdown when we come back. The Hawks have been in this situation before. I know Packer fans don't want to see this, but this desperation pass ended up being caught by Golden State for a touchdown. And then, just a week ago, with 118 remaining, Sidney Rice on the long ball against the Patriots and the comeback complete. Two game-winning touchdown drives, first rookie in history in the NFL to do that in the fourth quarter. Now here's Russell Wilson with 524 remaining, and the Seahawks need a touchdown to tie. Toss to Marshawn Lynch with blockers in front. Hurdles one man and gets out almost 10 yards before Justin Smith drags him down. When you're not catching a lot of footballs as a wide out, you got to block. I mean, if you're going to be a run first team, watch Braylon Edwards, number 17. He's going to come in here and crack. Look at the effort he gets. Give yourself up, big boy. Bang. Big hit on a bigger body. You love that. That opens up the hole. McQuiston pulls. Nice job. And the two guys we said we'd get a big dose of tonight, Frank Gore and Marshawn Lynch, both over 100 yards rushing now on the night. Wow. And they've earned it. Here's Lynch again. He didn't even get a yard out of that one. And guess who? Justin Smith. 49ers trying to hold on and win one at home. Frank Gore, 131 yards on the ground. He's been big as a receiver. Alex Smith, one miscue that may cost him dearly. Russell Wilson struggled, but he's had five drop passes tonight, and now Marshawn Lynch is over 100 yards. First down, Seattle. Right at the 30-yard line. Timeout. With 4.07 remaining in the fourth quarter. San Francisco is challenging the ruling on the field of a first down. I thought he was short on that last run yeah, when Justin Smith made the tackle. These are tough ones to win. We'll see if he wins when we come back. Jim Harbaugh challenged the spot on the field. Mike, when I called this play, I didn't think he was even close to a first down. You were right. Justin Smith on Marshawn Lynch, and he lands about at the line of scrimmage, it looks like, to us. Yeah, and look up top. You can see clearly up top. First down marker is the 30. He's nowhere near it. That's a full yard short. That's a good job by Jim Harbaugh. The, play, the runner was down at the 29-yard line. It'll be 31. San Francisco is not touched with a timeout. And the game clock will start on my signal. So third down and a yard, a huge yard coming up for Seattle. And they have missed out on their last five third down conversions. This could be the ball game right here. The 
but you got number 24 in your backfield. And that's good news. Yeah, and as much as that's anticipated, I think you got to run them or you got to go bootleg and let Russell Wilson get out there wide. But I'd run Marshawn Lynch. Third and one. They're going to give it to the fullback, Michael Robinson. Give the fullback a little sugar. Or the fullback, Michael Robinson. <laughs> Michael Robinson doesn't get a lot of carries, I'll tell you that much. That's only his fifth of the year, but none bigger. Yeah, former quarterback at Penn State. There's the double team right there with Okung and Carpenter. And that's just about pushing the pile and getting that critical first down. Now you got to have a little bit of a sense of urgency here. There's only 325 left in the football game. That's taking a long time in the huddle. First and ten, Seahawks. They need a touchdown. Second half, Russell Wilson and Ofer. Going to need to complete a couple somewhere along the line here. Comes a blitz. Completes one there. There's going to be a loss on the play. Golden Tate's got to get a block there. You run the bubble screen, and the other wide receiver has got to get the key block. Now, I give San Francisco a ton of credit because they're aggressive. Here's Golden Tate. He's got to get the block on Carlos Rogers. Rogers comes inside, makes the tackle, and at the end of the play, they get chippy again. And now it's second down and 12. With two and a half to go in the fourth quarter. Wilson throws high, almost caught, and almost intercepted. Chris Culliver almost had himself an interception. Yeah, I thought that ball was a little bit late coming out. Gives Culliver an opportunity to strip it. That's really good defense. Look at him coming down on the inside arm of Sidney Rice, almost coming up with the football. Culliver does a great job on man coverage. Third down and 12. they got to manufacture some yards here, Brad, and, and they haven't done anything this second half. Three receivers all to Russell Wilson's left, and now one of them, Sidney Rice, comes back in motion this way. And Wilson's got to take a timeout. Look, look at Justin Smith. <laughs> 2.23 remaining. Fourth quarter. 49ers clinging to a touchdown lead. Sundays wake up with first on the field in NFL game day morning. This Sunday on first on the field, what's next for the Ravens without Ray Lewis and Ladarius Webb? Melissa Stark will sit down with the Ravens to get some answers. On game day morning, how the Giants going to stop RG3 and the Redskins? We'll find out. First on the field, game day morning, all starts Sunday, 7 a.m. on NFL Network. Third down and 12 with 2.23 remaining. Seahawks down to two timeouts. I'd be alert Sidney Rice, and I'd be alert tailback screen here. They completed one-third and long the first week of the season. They haven't wow. converted one since. Wow, wow. Sidney Rice is all the way up top here on Terrell Brown. Tailback Marshawn Lynch in the backfield. Wilson pressured, throws. Somebody got a piece of it. Incomplete. Ahmad Brooks, I think. He and Willis were both coming. And there's a flag down. Pass was tipped, definitely. There is no foul for pass interference. The ball was tipped. It's fourth down. No doubt the ball was tipped. Now, Brooks is going to get heavy pressure from the outside. Want to see who gets the piece, though. Right there... That looked like Patrick Willis, 52, is going to get the piece right there. Well, the Seahawks the have to punt. Now the question is, can their defense hold, and will they get a chance offensively again, or can the 49ers put it away? He got close to the putter. Again, backpedaling all the way to the seven-yard line. And now comes the other way, across the 15, the 20, knocked out of bounds on the far side at the 23-yard line, maybe the 24. Now just two minutes and five seconds. The Seahawks will get a break at the two-minute warning to stop things, and then they've only got two more timeouts remaining. Don't forget, next week, we hope that Thursday night game comes down to the wire as well. Minnesota Vikings, probably the surprise 
of the NFC. And they'll take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers next Thursday night right here on NFL Network. Join us from Minneapolis. The whole gang will be there. Now, San Francisco's got 173 rushing yards this game. Second half, they've been dynamic in the run game. Seattle's got to sell out and get a three and out here, and they can't worry about taking chances on the edge. They have to make tackles, stop the clock, and get a three, at, three and out. Hunter is in there, not Frank Gore. And he gets the carry. And a tough couple of yards to bring us to the two-minute warning. 49ers with a football, Seahawks with only two timeouts remaining in San Francisco. Niners trying to get back on track on their home field. They're two minutes away. We're ready for the post-game program. You never know who's going to stop by. We'll give you the full highlights and get you set for the rest of Week 7 on the K-Jewelers post-game show. All right, two minutes from now, Patrick, second down and eight, 49ers. They've controlled... The game with a running game in the second half, but that was with Frank Gore, and he's not in there right now. i got to think he's banged up a little bit to have Kendall Hunter in and not Frank Gore. I would agree with that. Defensive tackle Clinton McDonald does a real nice job right there. No gain, and Brad, they're selling out for the run. Well, they have to do. They have to get a three and out. As you yep. said, they're one of the best in the business at getting a three and out. As you take a look, Dallas number one, and then Seattle next in line. 49ers have rushed in this half for 118 yards. Wow. So here's the third down and eight coming up. There's Gore. I got to think he's yeah. got an ache or pain or I'm, something. I'm with you. And we're we'll, we'll going to take this moment to say what a great job these two defense coordinators have done. Oh, huh? really? Vic Fangio, Gus Bradley, one touchdown allowed in this game. Love how quick, fast, and hard your two defenses play. Can they come up with a stop here on third down and eight? Smith is going to run. Puts his head down, gets what he can. It's not a first down, but the clock will continue to wind unless Seattle takes another timeout right here in a hurry. And they did. With a minute 48 remaining in the fourth quarter as we check in with Alex. Hey, Brad, well, you guys can see Frank Gore sitting on the bench on the sidelines. I think your intuition is correct, although the 49ers are not saying anything officially, but I've seen Frank Gore kind of wincing uh, in pain as he bends over and has had the trainer behind him kind of lifting up his jersey and putting his hand underneath on his back, but certainly feels like he is feeling some effects of this uh, hard-hitting game. He's going to feel a lot better if they hold on in the next minute and 48 because he has been the workhorse tonight and it would get San Francisco in front and the NFC West with a 5-2 and two record. There's what he's done tonight. 131 on the ground, 51 more as a receiver. And now lead a punt. Leon Washington waits way down there on the other end. Booming kick. Washington fields it over his shoulder at the 8-yard line. And only gets to the 10. Great punt, great coverage. And now the Seahawks, with no timeouts remaining, have to go 90 yards in a minute and 36 seconds. Great job by the special team unit of Brad Seeley, Tracy Smith covering that punt. Tremaine Brock with the tackle. 65-yard punt. Ooh. Four-yard return, that's a net of 61, which is about 20 yards better than the average net punt in the NFL. Remember, Russell Wilson's completed one pass this half. He needs a whole bunch of them here. They spot it at the 11-yard line, 89 yards away from the tie game. I want to know how many snaps Seattle's had offensively versus how many snaps San Francisco in this half because it seems like San Francisco just ran the ball all night long. Rookie quarterback at the controls. 89 yards away, quick out and caught by Rice. Complete pickup of about five. And there's 131 remaining. Yeah, that's tough sledding when you got to go from here 84 yards. You got to get the ball down the field a little bit. And they've had trouble doing that tonight yep. against this 49er defense. Second and five, Wilson in trouble, and down he goes. That's the one thing you can't let happen. Alden Smith with the sack. Yeah, Giacomini got beat by Alden Smith one-on-one. -on -one. 
and Alden Smith won. Got to get on the ball and go. Time Clock's run. run. Way back at the nine-yard line now. Third and 12. Pass protection first. Wilson at his own goal line. And flags are down and whistles blow. Giacomini's got no shot at right tackle in this kind of situation against Alden Smith. One-on-one. I thought maybe Brooks or somebody jumped in the neutral zone at the Full snap, start. but it's the other way. Offense. Five yard penalty. Seahawks are going the wrong way. Giacomini's worked hard to become a good player, but look at him. He's he's one on one with one of the better speed rush guys in the league. Alden Smith gets under his pads, jacks him back from the bull rush, falls back inside. Seahawks have to get all the way out to the 21 yard line just to get a first down. Russell Wilson's going to be throwing from his own end zone. Fires over the head of his tight end, Zach Miller. And we're down to maybe one play. Yep, we're down territory. So the Seahawks with a dramatic win coming from behind to beat the Patriots last week. Being asked to do it again. But now it's 4th and 17, and if this 49er defense holds one more play, they'll be atop the NFC West. Probably where you'll see him play zone behind deep, force the check down and come up and tackle. Russell Wilson's got to make sure he gets his football down the field, though. Wilson, last gasp attempt, down the middle, caught, fighting for the first down. I don't know if he got there. Boy, it's right on the marker. They got to get to the 21. Obamanu, his forward progress did it carry him to the 21. It's interesting where the refs are standing. They're standing right on the 21. You can see the yellow line, which is unofficial. His forward progress was at or behind. It looked like it was just at it. So everything on hold here with 43 seconds remaining. There's the football. Look up top. We can see. Boy, is that close. Where did they spot it? The result of the play is the safety. Oh, my goodness. That'll tell the story, and that'll end things. Look right here, and from inside out, a high-low block on Alden Smith. In the end zone, two players engage high and low. Now... For that to be a safety, intentional grounding, typically the initial contact has to come in the field of play, excuse me, in the end zone, not the field of play. The first contact there was in the field of play and not the end zone. And you saw the flag fly in on that replay at the end of the play. I did not see it at the time Wilson released the football. Measure to determine if it's a first down. San Francisco wants to elect the option to decline the penalty if it is not a first down. Oh, okay. So, uh, so Jim Harbaugh wants to measure it. I don't understand why he wouldn't want a safety. I don't know why he wouldn't want a safety and get the football right. back and then take a knee and go home. Right. I, I, I'm not sure I understand that one. I don't either. It's that short. The ball is short of the line of the game. It will go over on downs to San Francisco. So it would have been 15 to 6, which is a. Seattle would have had the opportunity, I guess, for an onside kick is the only thing I could think of. But it's, a, but it's a nine point game. It's two possessions. Gets the offense. That penalty is declined. San Francisco is electing to take the ball. The previous play is under further view. I think everybody needs to take a step back and figure this out. <laughs> 49ers are going to have the ball and they're going to have the win when we come back. 49ers wanted to know where the ball was going to be spotted because they would negate taking the safety, take the football instead, take a knee and go home. And uh, that's what they've 
yep. chosen to do at the 21 yard line. As Obamanu was about a half yard short, Frank Gore says, I'm Back going in. The, play, the ruling going on the field stands as called. It'll be San Francisco's ball, first down. A lot of work to get to that, and now all he's got to do is take a couple knees, and you know, the game's over. Right. Frank Gore's already headed to the locker room, one of the stars of the game for sure tonight. A lot, a lot more wins for these guys in Seattle. They, they're playing hard. This, this is what you're going to see in the NFC West this year. Arizona, they have a great defense. Yep. Offense, they're going to struggle the ball. St. Louis is playing good defense. Alex Smith, victory formation, takes a knee. San Francisco will go to the top of the NFC West temporarily at least at 5-2. and two, Wasting a great night by Marshawn Lynch, too, the Seahawks will fall to four and three. Arizona has something to say about who's on the top of the standings, but they have to wait till Sunday to do it. Yeah, I call the NFC West the cold tub division because after <laughs> every division game, an awful lot of guys will be sitting in that cold tub tomorrow morning. Going to be a happy cold tub for the 49ers. They bounce back after losing to the Giants last week, get their offense in gear in the second half, mostly with Frank Gore. And they win this one 13 to 6. So San Francisco's 5 and 2, Seahawks 4 and 3. Don't forget K Jewelers post game show featuring highlights, analysis, interviews, and the press conferences. You want to stick around. Rich and the guys will have all of it for you. For Mike Mayock, Alex Flanagan, Brad Nessler from Candlestick Park, the 49ers win it tonight.